Hey, welcome back to the big board. Duh, 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 duh. What are we looking at? Well, we're looking at next war, and in particular, the India-Pakistan module. And you may wonder why there are so many counters on the board when arguably this is the first video you're seeing about the game. And this is because I read the instructions for the game, uh, for the scenario. Look, how can, how can you resist this, okay? It says loose nukes, right? Well, what are you gonna do? You can't not play that scenario. So I'm looking at it thinking, wow, that sounds really interesting. And it actually doesn't look like there's very many units in it. Uh, you know, set up all the units for the, 30, uh, the 43rd Airborne Division and the 44th. And then set up, uh, and then it didn't say really set up anything for the Pakistanis. I figured, well, there couldn't be too much there. But you set up the entire Pakistani army, the entire Indian army, <laughs> and pretty much all the Americans and all the Russians and all the Chinese as well. So by the time I finished getting all these pieces out and realized what I'd done, I figured, well, what the hell? I may as well just dive in and go for it anyway because the more I read about the scenario and the special setup rules and what it's all about, I thought, I have to play this. It sounds really cool. And it seems to me like the type of scenario that was so enticing that despite the fact that I may screw it up playing, I'm going to have a lot of fun. So what we're going to do now, rather than me explain how the game system works and how all the mechanics work and all the numbers on the counters, we'll kind of dig into that a little bit as we go through the game. We're just gonna have a look at the general situation because I think sometimes it's more interesting to delve into what's going on in the scenario and what some of the choices are and some of the thinking behind the choices for the both playing sides. That's often more interesting than this is a 433 aircraft and this is a 546 unit and the red number denotes A, B, and C. You know, there's lots of drone videos out there that will tell you all about that sort of stuff. You can go watch those and learn all about the game and listen to the script being read. Or you can hang out here and just listen to me crap on and make lots and lots of mistakes and have fun. <laughs> so totally up to you. And this is with me drinking water. which since I put new salt, more salt tablets in, tastes a whole lot better. So here's the situation. Here's what the scenario is about, and here's what we have to do as, uh, as players on both sides. Let me just see if I can find a spot to put the camera down, because there are a heck of a lot of units on this board. I think the only thing that's missing is the Commonwealth, the Australian forces, that's pretty much it. Okay, so here, you know, basically we got Pakistan, okay? And each of these uh, yellow uh, counters here are called clearing counters, and they have a different purpose in the game in general. For this specific game, each one of these counters has a number on it uh, that ranges, I think, from three to six. And there are a certain number of them that are numbered six and five. And it's the uh, number six and the number five ones we care about because they're the ones that accumulate victory points for us. And they're the ones that represent either nuclear weapons or important materials for nuclear weapons, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And in order to find them, we have to basically uh, roll a die with a unit in the hex or have a special forces unit in the hex. And then there's one other way to do it as well. And I can't remember what that is right now. What is it? Electronic detection, I think is the, the what it is. So, um, when you do discover what it is, and I'm not gonna to touch any of these because I don't wanna mess, mess up this, and why is that counter there? It's not supposed to be there, it's supposed to be up on the track. Uh, so, uh, you find out what the number is, like if I know uh, as the allied player, which would be the Indians um, and their allies, uh, we would look at that number and we would know what it is. Now, it can be captured by the Pakistanis and their allies, uh, and then they'll know what the number is and then both sides will uh, know it and then you can flip it, right? And then it's a fight for whoever controls that hex. So the net is there's this race to find where all the nukes are. It's only a six turn scenario. That's the most number of turns it can be. But at turn three, you start rolling for a sudden death thing. And I haven't really looked into what that means, 
but it sounds scary. So it, it means that we're just going to be going totally balls out for it. We're going to be charging in here, trying to find the weapons and blowing shit up and fighting. And as I looked at the map, I started imagining what, what might happen, right? What could be done from a physical standpoint, moving counters. And then I started thinking about, well, how are we going to apply the air war to this? And then, of course, in this game, there are cruise missiles and missiles and artillery and airborne and special forces and all sorts of fun stuff. And my mind just started to go, Whoa, what are we doing? So uh, pretty exciting stuff, right? Uh, so let's look at this in this particular video from the side of the allied forces, which are in this game, the Indians working with the Marines, the US forces, uh, the 101st Airborne, 82nd Airborne, which are over on this little uh, holding box here. And we also uh, have the Russians involved. Oh, so, so there's a Russian, uh, two little Russian airborne units right here that can drop in. And we have the air forces from both sides. Uh, so there's the Russians, the Americans, and the Indian air forces. And I've taken some liberties with some optional rules, basically equally giving uh, each side uh, uh, some of the more modern and stealthy aircraft. And basically what that has meant is that it's, it's popped the uh, Pakistani uh, communist Chinese, the PRC side up by three victory points to start the game. So the allies are starting at a deficit of three VPs. Neither here nor there, I don't think. We'll see, I may, I may end up regretting that. All right, so the game, uh, when I look at this game, it, it feels a little bit like Third World War to me in terms of movement combat. But then you have a more sophisticated air war layered in, and then you have uh, electronic detection, and you have nuclear threats, and you have cruise missiles, and you have special forces, and you have some different rules with artillery and different rules with supply and things like that. So it gets fairly heady fairly quickly. I don't think when you, when you actually get into the game, no, nothing is particularly particularly complex per se. There's just a lot of stuff going on. I do like the way the game is structured here with these tables. So this one table allows me to keep track of uh, both sides uh, supply, which can be used for various things. And we'll talk about that at some other time. <coughs> uh, the cruise missiles uh, for each side, uh, the regular missiles and the air transport air points and air mobile air mobile points that are available. And I can see all of that at a glance. I can see what turn I'm on. And then on the advanced track here, uh, on this track here, I can see the uh, phase that we're playing through. So I can just roll on through here. This goes here for the first turn. Uh, I can just roll on through here and we can play each turn and keep track of where we're at. And it means when we stop playing, we can, you know, skew the counter or whatever the case may be and it all should work, right? <clears throat> Fine. That's what I thought you would say. Okay. The air war is going to be particularly inter interesting because we've got uh, this is a nice ready box, and uh, it would be, be cool if uh, anyone did the what we did the what to do it like this. Got the opposing sides here, you pop the units up into the air superiority boxes, and then you work out who has air superiority, and that's going to allow you to do different things. And then, of course, you've got uh, air mission, air, you know, uh, air combat, and all sorts of fun stuff and, and uh, support missions. Let's look at the map and talk about what we're trying to do here. Uh, maybe that's a bad side. Maybe we should be over this side. So, you know, backing off a little bit, big picture wise, the forces end up all the way over here on the border. Here's, uh, I think, China. And uh, this is India following this yellow line. And then this is all Pakistan. And the Chinese have already landed in Islamabad and made a commitment and they are ostensibly set up. That's where they're going to be, but they're allowed to, everyone's allowed to move a half move uh, to 
you know, get started. And these guys, the allies move first and then these guys move. So as the allies, what are we going to do? Well, it's kind of a long-winded way of getting to, to the point about what we're going to, what we're going to do. When I look at, look at the map here, there's a bulk of, four, of uh, yellow counters on this side of the map and not a lot of enemy forces. There are some forces up here that are reasonably strong and reasonably high quality. Uh, it, you, they, this game uses efficiency ratings to reflect quality. These guys are rated fives and sixes, which is good, but not awesome. Seven would be considered awesome. Marines are sevens. And so I think uh, some means of penetrating here or here and, and taking, taking out or blocking these roads here and trying to drive a wedge up in this way and come around or drive a wedge up through Lahore and into this area would be neat. Also dropping airborne forces into here and capturing these, setting up a base, creating a supply line here going at it that way might be good because we could look, we could take on or accumulate uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of the 36 counters that would probably set us up to take on these three here as well. That'd give us 11 or 12. There's a couple more up there. These guys are gonna have to uh, spend a little bit of time searching because you've got to identify them and clear them or not clear them, but identify them and roll the dice. So you've got to put units in these hexes, roll dice to see what's there, find what's there, and then move on from there. So there's gonna be a little bit of time spent trying to clear up there, I would imagine, before they, these guys can penetrate down this way. This force uh, enters the board. That's a fairly substantial division, actually. They're all five rated. Uh, so that enters the board turn one as well. So there's lots of moving parts going on here. There are a lot of Indian forces on this border, not borderline, but on the edge of the map here. And so we're gonna to have to work out how to quickly and effectively get them into the game, perhaps into combat as early as possible in turn one and try and clear these four, five hexes there, take control of Lahore as a hub for you know, supply lines and then mitigate any potential reinforcement from the Chinese coming this direction. And I don't know that I have enough forces here to do that, but that might be where perhaps we send either the US airborne forces in here and send the Soviets in over here, or vice versa, who knows. I do have a whole stack of artillery units and uh, you know, choppers and, and, a, and a mountain uh, formation that needs to be placed as well uh, and I've got the same on the other side I've got to do a few things before we get started but that's kind of what the story is right so we're trying to uh, there's another division up here on the northern end of the map up here that needs to come on board you know they can probably search these hexes before too much goes on and we can start pushing you these guys the packies can start pushing these guys down this way there is a little set of forces all the way over here. There are no clearing hexes to be worked on or managed there, so I'm not sure why that stuff is there. There is an airfield here that will be worth some VPs as well, but probably not much. So that's kind of the scenario, and it looks really interesting. And I've read the rules once on the plane a month ago. I had another quick look at them the other day. Found some rules I hadn't read yet, so <laughs> read those. Uh, gone through all the optional rules, gone through the scenario rules, so we're kind of ready to get going. And you know, I think since we're at 14 minutes, we must well spend a moment now instead of making two videos. Let's talk a little bit about the the Pakistani potential. What do they have to do? They've got to keep the bad guys out of their country and clear as many of these as they can and accumulate victory points because it's all about finding you know, what's under these and finding the fives and the sixes. So they're in the kind of the catbird seat where they can they can identify some of these very quickly. 
uh, know whether they're valuable or not, and then play the game of are they valuable or are not? Are they or are they not valuable with the enemy uh, by garrisoning uh, perhaps hexes that are not worth anything? So I'm going to have to come up with a little, you know, do they leave a unit or not leave a unit random mechanism to keep both sides honest since there's a hidden uh, mechanic going on here. Or I can, excuse me, or I can just leave, not look at any of these things and just uh, rotate them around to be the right way up when they are cleared and detected. When they are cleared, I should say. And then if both sides identify what's in there, then we can flip, flip it over, all right? Maybe that's what we'll do, who knows? So we'll come up with some way of managing that. But clearly Lahore is gonna be vital. Uh, blowing certain bridges might be vital. You know, it might be worthwhile blowing the bridges here to slow the Indian uh, advance from, uh, you know, across the border. Uh, we need to get forces to protect these bridge areas over here and uh, maintain our lines, interior lines of communication. And we need to get these forces down into this wealth of units here uh, as quickly as possible. I might actually try and come up with two plans of attack for each side, very light outlines of what the, the operating plan might be for each side, then roll dice and then use that as the, well, here's what we're gonna do, because otherwise I'm gonna create a plan for the allies and then my counter plan will be the counter <laughs> to that plan. Uh, so let's try and keep it interesting and, and we'll, we'll perhaps have a, a, a very offensive plan and a less offensive plan and kind of go at it from there. All right, long rambly chat. I'm excited about this. We'll see how far we get, how many turns we get through. If we get through a turn, who knows? We might get bogged down in the air war. I am gonna use, I think, uh, just to keep life interesting, use the, there's an abridged version of the advanced air rules. We will, probably use those unless I see it diluting the experience. And we're gonna go at it from there. I'm not afraid to play the air war. It will take a little while, but that's okay. All right, talk to you guys soon. Ciao.